So one of the things that Pat and I usually start this talk out with, and I'll tell you guys, this is the most common phrase I've ever heard in entomology in my field. I didn't know what it was, so I killed it. Is that any way to run? And, and that's what we do today, don't we? If we don't know, you know, if they don't look exactly like we do, bang, man, they're gone. If you don't think like we do, bang, okay? found a whole bunch of potato beetle larvae on my broccoli. I killed them all. I'm like, guess what? Potato beetle larvae aren't going to be on broccoli. Those are ladybugs, cubebugs. Right. You know? Or I killed a whole bunch of lady, uh, potato beetle larvae on potato beetle eggs, rather, on my whatever. Guess what? They don't lay their eggs on anything but potatoes. Or almost, hardly ever, way more likely you just wiped out a bunch of ladybug eggs. Right. So if you don't know what it is, don't right. my, my, my partner up in Boone, I'm in the field one day and I notice he's walking around squishing stuff. So I go, Brad, what are you squishing? He goes, harlequin bug eggs. And I'm going, look, and he's squishing wasp cocoons. I go, give me your hand. Don't do that. And he's like, oh. So, you know, and every now and again, we, we forget this stuff. So, but you, you really need to know what you're, what you're getting rid of, you know. So once again, Let's go back to Highland Lake and Pat and this whole system that I walked into naively. And that is, if you guys have a decision mantra and you're looking at something, you can ask yourself, is this going to encourage my biodiversity or is it not? And I'll tell you what, nine times out of 10, if it makes, increases your biodiversity, it's probably a good thing. Now, obviously, you're going to have to experiment around with that a little bit, but you've got to remember not only have we got these parasitic wasps and flies, but we've got the calembola and the decomposers and the beetles. There's this whole system going on. So even though we're only maybe interested in the stuff that's going to make food for us, outside of that system is all this other stuff. And so what I would tell you guys, the easiest thing to monitor are ladybugs. Okay. If your ladybugs are doing good, then your parasitic wasps are probably doing good. If your parasitic wasps are doing good, then your surfeit flies and other things. So you don't have to be a total expert in all this, even though if you want to question and go down the rabbit hole real far, we can take you down the rabbit hole. You know, if you really want to learn something about Coetzee agglomerata, well, I did my PhD on it. I can tell you about it. Or Coetzee rubecula. If I need to know something, I tend to learn it. And I can be rattling off the names of all these bugs. I can't. You know why? I don't need to know no, that. No, he doesn't need to know that. He had to go to school. He had to learn it. I don't have to because I can just look and say, balance. You know? Right. My heart sings when I see clouds of insects. The smaller, the better, buzzing around. And I see some pests in there, great. As long as I see all that activity, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it'd be nice if I could, you know, if I could just do a transplant from Richard, just like zip all that information when I'd love to do it. But I tend not to learn things I don't need to know. Well, and that's the way, you know, we're all that way, I think. And so uh, let me tell you where I've kind of disappeared to for the last 10 years was I got involved in this hemlock lily adelgid stuff, all right? So here I get dropped in with a bunch of foresters now, and I start talking to these guys about farmscaping principles, and they don't understand a word that I'm saying at first. But it turns out, long story short, Hemlock woolly adelgid is native to the Pacific Northwest of our own country. There's a winter predator that's native that, eat, that doesn't come out until right now. And there's a, there's a couple summer predators, all right? And that's the whole story, you guys, right there. Now, it took us years to figure that out, and there's some other bizarre stuff we might get to a little bit later. But what I want to do real quick, let me go over here. Yeah, make it quick. OK, well, I'm just going to show you guys this, and then we'll go outside. Um, I'm not going to pass these around because I, we're going to release them. But um, I caught 55 Laracobius nigrinus, and that's the predator that eats hemlock woolly adelgid. And the other thing that I did, I put some ladybugs in here. This is Chilocris stigma. This is our native scale predator. Boop, that one just went. Oh, come here, you. Oh, well, we'll get it outside. I flicked it so it flew. All right. So anyway, we're going to stop right. OK, yeah, all right. Well, then you get the bonus. You get the bonus round. So 
You want to see it up close? Okay. Let me get in the sun. Yeah, okay. Well, you've got, you've got these black beetles here that are Chilocra stigma, and then down, let's see if we can see some of the little Laracobius. They like to hide because I put a whole bunch of foliage in here. But the Laracobius are small. They look like a uh, sawtooth grain beetle, ones that used to get in crackers. They're just a little tiny thing, but they eat adelgids like crazy. They're native to our own country. And so up in the Boone area now, we have almost 200 square miles of hemlock regrowth because we've got nine years with this beetle. It's spread between Grandfather Mountain all the way around Grandfather, all the way through Banner Elk, all the way up Beach Mountain, down the backside of Beach Mountain. So we're looking at about eight miles out from the original release, which was at Hemlock Hill, where we put 30 beetles per old growth tree, and those trees died because we didn't have enough. It was a game of numbers, okay? Once we realized that it was a game of numbers, then we started going out and getting hundreds of these from Seattle. I'm kind of an ex officio Seattleite. I love Seattle. It's great. Ooh, it's like Disneyland for hippies, man. It's great. A lot of good people out there, all this multicultural stuff. And we're collecting bugs like crazy out there, bringing them back. And so there's a formula with these beetles. However high your tree is in feet times two, if you put these beetles out, they'll stop the adelgid. But you gotta have needle duff under the tree because the larvae of these drop out of the hemlock under the tree. Once you do that, you're set. You see, so, this is where I say Richard was coming upstream because we were talking about beneficial insects as a solution and we're hearing from the Forest Service, it's too expensive, can't do it. We have to treat the trees. We have to keep treating the trees and we're like, well, they say they save some trees. You know, I'll give them some credit that when you treated, you save some trees. But some trees, yeah. I used my own farmscaping principles, and the thing about this is that I'll tell you is pine trees have adelgids, spruce trees have adelgids, so there were lots. In other words, I had all my alternate hosts when I'm making releases. If I had an area that had hemlock only or I had an area that had hemlock, Fraser fir, red spruce, and eastern white pine, I'm putting it over there and they took off like crazy because they had all that other food and these other guys didn't realize that. So I'm going to meetings and I'm getting thousands of these beetles and people think that I am not telling the truth. And I've heard that before because of the, of the kind of stuff that he, you know, this is part of when he talks about swimming upstream, is getting dropped into these groups and just trying to, through teamwork, I had to learn their system, but I knew what the fundamentals were. And you guys were saving hemlocks. You can come up. Yeah, and so now I'll, I'll tell you guys, I supply the Forest Service with their beetles. And I'm, I don't mean it arrogantly. What I mean, I mean it to tell you guys, I use my own principles in a new field of forest entomology and the stuff worked. So I, I don't care if you're growing broccoli or corn or boxwoods to get boxwood leaf miner or hemlocks. In fact, I'm looking for hemlock nurseries now that are abandoned because we're putting beetles in there and just cranking them out of there. So I will stop, but I wanted to, I, and so we have beetles. We can make a release on hemlocks around here. There's 55 in here. If I collect them on the weekend, they're five bucks a piece, so there's about 300 beetles in here. If I collect them during the week, they're down around $3 a piece. I took the first 2,000 that I caught this year and I drove them up and put them out in New River Gorge yesterday. I drove across the bridge right to where Burnwood is there. The first thing we did is we pounded on the trees and we found these beetles there because they'd been put out there before. And so we just put another 2,000 of these out at, at New River Gorge. And so what you'll see, you'll see these trees regrowing now. And the economic threshold, here's, okay, here's the who, what, when, where, why, and how for hemlocks. Once less than 45% of the needles are infested, the trees just grow like crazy. They don't care if they got a delgid on them. You know, what happens at our trees here is they get covered and it kills them. These guys knock it down below 45%. These trees just grow like crazy. So here you are. Here's a whole different, a whole different system using the same stuff that I've learned from Pat and from people at Carolina Farm Stewardship and people in here. And I'll tell you, that's the only thing. It's, it's not that 
all I ever did was take what everybody else told me and just put it together. Okay? My dad used to tell me I had a keen sense of the obvious and I'd make a good Marine. And he was Air Force guy and telling me that, you know, the Air Force guy telling you make a good Marine, that's fighting words. That means you're lower, you know, that don't think very much of you. But that's okay. That's how it works, you guys. So, well, and that's what I'm going to tell you is if somebody as dumb as me can hold all this together, I mean, I've just fooled people by pretending to, you know, I just never gave up. Just don't give up. And remember that there are people, there, we're out here, you can call us. Now, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of us, but if you've got a question, I mean, all of us have been sitting alone in a field, me out there cutting, going, do this and then I think about Patrick and I'm like oh Patrick's out there too he's cutting butter. okay and Charles is too you know because a lot of time you think in farming you're by yourself a lot I at least when I was I you know when I was doing it for the uh, Golden Leaf and the New River Organic Growers so take this as just a little piece of the puzzle here there's books up here that we can look at later um, I, I will go get a bunch of vials and we can go out and start walking around and we're just going to catch stuff and come back in and lay it out and I want you, if there's something you guys haven't seen that you need to see, let's go see it and I'll get some, I got some umbrellas and some beet sticks too and some aspirators. So I'll go, let's just take a break for a minute and I'll go right, get so that I'll stuff. I'll give them a few tips. Yeah, okay. I look pretty close. Um, if you want to see, um, if you want to see pollen bugs, okay, that's pretty easy. What we've noticed is we've got such good control that where you're going to see them is going to be where there's the damage on the cabbage. You'll see. You look at the cabbage and you'll see these bleached areas, and you turn the leaf over and there's almost always pollen bugs on the other side. You know, um, look for the eggs. Look for egg. We're looking for eggs, right? We're going to be looking in. The, the, the cup of the, pl of the broccoli plants, liable to see, likely to see there. On the back sides of plants, real often that's where we're going to see the pest, okay? Look in the weeds too. Just really, and open up your peripheral vision. You know, one of my um, favorite sayings about how to teach yourself this stuff is to cultivate the fine art of puttering in the garden. Don't go out there, don't be so directed, I'm going to go find things. Go out there and just take in the area. You know, enjoy the flowers, watch the bees. You know, I saw a spider, you know, trapping a, a tiny little wasp. I wasn't watching for that. I was watching the bees feeding on the sage thinking, gee, you know, it's a deep flower. Why are those, spy those bees feeding on uh, pineapple sage? But they were. You know, I got to run that by Richard. And just by, you know, you just stop. You see something interesting, just keep looking at it and you'll see other things, you know. And that's what, and look for... If you see aphids, if, you, if you're lucky enough to find a nice little aphid bloom out there, just sit and study it and things will start showing up, you know. Um, last, last September, or no, it was August, we were planting rutabagas and they'd sat in the greenhouse too long and they were all covered up with aphids. And same old story, I'm like, oh, that's not a problem. You know, they get out in the field, I know they're going to be cleaned up, right? But, you know, lots of times, insect outbreaks are like zits. You just kind of have to squish them, right? They just, they're driving you nuts, you know? And Jeremy, the, the anchor of this farm, um, the Mills River Educational Farm, the man who's in that field every day just doing what needs to be done, was planting them out. He said, Pat, there's just tons of aphids on every leaf of these rutabagas. Can we squish them? And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, you're depriving a whole lot of, you know, food for beneficials, but, you know, you just can't say no sometimes. I understand, you know, he needs to squish them, right? So he goes to squish him, and the first leaf, he says, uh, but what's this little orange thing on here, you know? And it was a little tiny um, larva of a predatory fly, a Phytolides. And I said, oh, don't squish that one. That's beneficial. So I'm busy doing something else. They come back a few minutes later, they say, they're on every leaf. And, Oops, I said, well, I guess we're not squishing any of them, you know? So just know that, you know, you look at those aphids, and you may see things, you know, and they're tiny. So just look close, you know? Um, and we'll see what we find. The good news is this many people, we should find some interesting stuff, even though this is not prime territory. 